Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 717. The topic today is pain is a messenger. It also escalates if you're not, you don't listen. Something like that in the title. I'll explain what I mean and go deeper in that in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily Facebook Live. And if you're watching on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first. I'll tell you about that at the end. Um, I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine, Messages from the Masculine, inspiring your feminine heart, which started over two years ago. So now we're at episode 717. Yeah, we're getting up there. We've been getting up there for a long time. <laughs> And the topic today is actually a continuation of yesterday's broadcast. I talked about, um, yesterday the title was Rising from the Ashes, How Pain Can Be a Blessing. This is going deeper into the topic about, about pain because I touched on it yesterday, but I didn't go anywhere near as deep as I wanted to. And I had two conversations this morning that really provoked that in me, or I should say inspired me in response to the, the people I was talking to to talk about it now. So first of all, I'm not just, gonna, not just speaking about physical pain. I'm also going to speak about emotional pain too. So if you've had some breakups in the past or heartbreak or upset in relationships, stuff like that, stay tuned. This is going to be relevant to you as well. But to start the example, I start with physical pain because it's the one we can most relate to. Because some people apparently don't relate to emotional pain. <laughs> well, we'll see. But the thing is, for most of us, if we get some sort of physical thing, like a toothache, for example. Actually, it's a good example. It's kind of good. When a tooth starts hurting, it's going to be kind of annoying. And you'll be like, yeah, I need to get taken care of. But then a week or two goes by, you don't think about it. And so the next morning you wake up, after, I mean, the, the, the morning you wake up after a couple of weeks, suddenly it's going to jab a bit more at you and get even more painful. And it's like, you really must take care of it, but you're too busy doing other things. Another week goes by. And that jabbing pain becomes like a knife stuck in your head. And like, okay, I've got to go take care of it. You maybe can relate to that. I'm not saying toothache is thing, something you have to use as a reference, but if you've had a physical pain that you didn't take care of, it tends to get more painful, generally speaking. I've got a caveat on that I'll come back to. Sorry, I just, I just caught a glimpse of something else that's like sliding by going, oh yeah, that one. All right. So first of all, most pains tend to escalate if they're not treated. Although it's not the pain you treat. This is the whole thing I want to talk about. Is pain, as I said in the title, is a messenger the pain you're experiencing is getting worse from the toothache is because you haven't taken care of the infection or the tooth problem that caused the pain in the first place. The thing is, the pain is not the cause. So if you use painkillers, all you're doing is numbing what is actually a messenger. You're not dealing with the problem at hand unless you take a painkiller to then go get see the dentist or whatever you're doing. What has this got to do with relationships, you may be thinking? If you're not, now you can. <laughs> because I said how this is also true in emotional pain too. We as human beings have an emotional range and spectrum we, we play in. Women more than men is the general assumption, but quite a lot of men do as well, but they keep it more um, under wraps, which is part of the problem. I'll get to that as well, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, I've got the, that one there, this one, okay, I'll, I'll keep going. All right, so first of all, in the context of emotional pain, after a bad breakup, a heartbreak, a wounding, an upset, so that caused you to lose the person you were in love with, you can feel pretty messed up, depressed, sad, maybe even guilty or resentful, but emotionally distraught. That is a form of pain as well. And the truth is that it will not get any better, usually, until you do something about it. Now, I have to go back to what I, said I was going to talk about over here, which is sometimes pain does go away, apparently. But this is the thing. The pain doesn't go away as much as it goes numb. And if you may have noticed, for example, when you've injured yourself, sometimes your body will make that part of you numb to stifle the pain. You may do it with painkillers. Emotionally speaking, in the, the context of relationship again, over a period of time, you might say, well, it's great because time heals all wounds. I don't agree. Time numbs all wounds. That one you can write down. Time numbs all wounds because time is a experience over... Uh, no, I was going to play something fancy. That's not going to work. Let me back it up a second. 
the pain over time tends to become numb. It's kind of like we become we become more tolerant of something. Yeah, tolerant. You know, when I know that I've done things where I've like, like banged my knee on something, and initially it's like, ouch, I hurt. But over a period of time, it starts to dissipate because there's a numbness that sets in. The same thing's true with emotions, but the thing is it's not, the pain's going away. The pain's just going numb so you don't feel it anymore. However, as I said, pain is a messenger, which means if you do not resolve the source of the message that created the pain in the first place, the heartbreak, the wounding, the upset, the hurt feelings, the judgment, the, the resentment, the guilt, whatever that is, it ain't gonna go away on its own. You know, it was real proper English, wasn't it? Your best option is to resolve it once and for all, because as I said in other broadcasts, you may have had a bad breakup relationship where you stuffed everything down and you find and you, you're going like fine. But as soon as you get into the next relationship, when you get more intimate and you get closer and closer and closer, what happens is the person who you're in a relationship with will either invite or break through the, the barrier you've had around the pain and wounding that you had from the previous relationship, and it's gonna come spilling out. Unless you want your partner to be a therapist, I don't recommend doing that to them. It's not fair. So what I'm suggesting is before you meet somebody else, you would be best advised to go into a deeper place within yourself to either do the work on yourself if you've got the skills or seek somebody out who can help you to heal those past wounds and even numb feelings, numbed feelings, excuse me, that you've been carrying around with from the past. The pain of that, again, may be numbed out, but it's still there. But again, numbing the pain is like shooting the messenger. If you do it consciously, intentionally, and physically, like you take a painkiller, or you go and take somebody else to avoid dealing with the pain from the past, it doesn't go away, it just gets numbed, as they dumbed down, numbed down. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on you look at it, it will keep reminding you. Now, I did say something about escalating the title, I think. The thing about pain, especially a emotional wounding, and certainly with certain traumas, as I mentioned with the toothache at the beginning of this talk, the pain doesn't tend to go away, it just escalates. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Jermaine, for, for tiny, running my head. So pain is a messenger. If you don't listen, it escalates, yes. How true, how true this is can, can be if not handled and taken care of properly. Thank you for talking once again, Barry, on this time on this time of day. You're welcome, Jimmy. Thank you for your feedback and interaction. But this is this is one of the things I realized I've been holding on to is something I didn't really talk about much. I've mentioned other ways, and yesterday when I did talk about it, I actually touched into it, but today I want to give a full-on, like, this is about pain as a messenger, so you get the point. But thank you for the feedback. Um, it is a vital piece of understanding that we will... It's like we don't outlast pain. Pain outlasts us unless you look at the source of the pain and you treat, resolve, heal that part. Again, if you had a toothache, you get the tooth taken care of, the pain goes away because the messenger is no longer needed. The pain is no longer needed. So when you look at pain differently going forward, I hope, and you see that pain is not something bad, oh my God, let me stifle it and numb it out and put it down. If it's not obvious why it's there, because something is very obvious, is ask if you want, well, actually, mm, I'll come back to that one in a moment too, is to be inquisitive about the pain. Now, okay, bring it back in now. There's something I learned a long time ago in a seminar, and this is where some of this stuff took, comes from that I learned years ago. And this is my own sort of um, amalgamation of it, so to speak. The thing about pain, which is really interesting, is when you, some of the work I do with my clients is called parts integration. It's an old paradigm, it's a piece of NLP, and much of other teachings I've used that blend together from my own experience. One of the things you can do with anything in life, which is kind of fun in parts integration, I like to look at it as being as if you're setting your own cartoon movie. Now you're like, what does that got to do with anything? Here's the thing. You can, if you choose to, because pain is a messenger, means it has communication to give you, you can actually ask pain to tell you the message. As crazy as that sounds, it's doable. I've, I've done it myself and I've seen the experience with your clients, it works. By giving pain a voice, by giving pain a chance to express itself, First of all, you may discover what it is that the pain was there to give you as a message, as in what caused the pain in the first place. Secondly, the pain will likely diminish if it doesn't go away completely, because once it's delivered the message, it's no longer needed. As crazy as that sounds, pain can go away by simply getting the message from the pain and saying thank you. I know it sounds really crazy. It's not the same as taking a, 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 a um, ibuprofen or some other you know, painkiller. It's actually a way of diminishing pain because you're taking into account what the pain is giving you as a message. 
That's woo, I know. But it does work, I know. I've seen it work and I've had it experience myself. I, I'm, I'm not going to even see now, sorry. I, I, I was reflecting on the practice that we did, the, the, how you do it, but it's it's more complex than I'd rather do it here. If you want to find out how to do it with me, you can reach out to me. I, I can walk, it through, walk you through it. I don't feel I'm going to do it right here. Maybe, maybe do it tomorrow. Maybe. Not promising, but maybe. This is a powerful piece of technology in terms of human development, of, psychi of, of understanding your psyche and understanding your personality, that when you do this sort of practice, you start to discover that you're way more powerful than you thought you are, or thought you were, and you'll have more ability to function without pain in the world because you'll be responding to the pain rather than reacting in a much more immediate format. So when pain shows up, you're like, whoa, hang on a second, what did I do? What happened? What did I respond to? If it's emotional, you can just ask like, okay, what's this pain from? Now, you don't, have to, you don't actually have the pain tell you. When you ask yourself, where did the pain come from? 90% of the time, you'll see or you'll hear or you'll feel where that started from, what triggered it. Maybe it was an interaction with somebody early that day. Maybe it was an argument with your, with your spouse. Maybe it was something else happened with your work or, or something in the news that triggered you. You'll find the source of it and you can change it. If it's a physical pain, same thing. Is that you may wonder like, how did I bang my knee? Oh, right, when I get in the car, I, I, I hit the door. That sort of thing. When you become aware of it, it can, not say it will, but it can diminish the pain. But it's still going to do the treatment of whatever triggered it because the pain is usually an indicator of something where you got wounded in some way. And that was in quotes for those of you listening or not watching. The wounding is something that you can treat. The pain isn't something you treat. The pain is something you listen to. I think I've hammered this point home several times and you've got my I'm talking about here. Um, there was another piece that was hanging out there. What was it? It was the one I put over here. I, I, I use my, I, put, I, use, I have a spatial reference in my head at times, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. It worked for this one. It didn't work for this one. <laughs> I lost that one, whatever it was. I guess it wasn't important enough. Um, <laughs> I think you got my point. Pain is a useful tool to learn how to use it. It escalates if you don't treat it. It goes numb if you try to put, try to avoid it, but it doesn't go away until you actually work with it. Pain is your gift is a gift, as I mentioned yesterday. That when it is a gift, you get to use it for your advancement, for your healing, for your transformation. Do that. Don't just suffer it. Don't don't make it make it, and then something you're like a cross to bear, and don't try to numb it out. It it's only worth numbing out once you know you're on the on the path to healing it. Because yes, if you have a toothache and you're gonna see the dentist, you're not putting it off, then yeah, take a painkiller between now and you see the dentist as long as you're planning to do so because you want to have the healing so the pain doesn't have to be there. That is true for every part of the pain cycle, in physical and emotional. So I highly recommend that if that shows up for you, do something about it consciously. Now, if you want to go a bit deeper and talk about it privately with me, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. Or you can just message me over social media and we can have a sort of a time to chat. This is something that, as, as overlooked it is, as it is, the most profound, one of the most profound tools we have to become more um, competent, confident, and facile in our way to live life. When pain becomes a, an ally, that was the word I was looking for earlier, when pain becomes an ally, we understand the benefits it gives you rather than just going, pain, I hate it. Then you can become more self-aware, self-conscious, self-conscious, not, not self-conscious, self-conscious, <laughs> and more supportive of yourself. It's a powerful tool. So I recommend you learn how to use the message of pain to heal whatever started it, rather than avoiding it. I think that's clear. All right, I thank you for watching. appreciate you being with me as always. If you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below and I'll respond and sign off. When you're watching here, if you're watching on the replay on YouTube, I'll give you the links where you can find me. Um, this is my personal Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. My business page is where the replays live, which is barryselby.author. And then on YouTube, I have a channel called, sorry, on YouTube, I have a channel, which is my name, Barry Selby. Excuse me. Yes, channel and playlist. Channel, which is Barry Selby, a playlist called Messages for the Mask, and we can watch all my replays on YouTube. Um, this is something that may be a bit challenging for some people to understand, but I guarantee it works. If you want to find out how, talk to me. Um, with that, I thank you for watching, as always. I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I invite you to join me then on my personal page, and uh, just know that pain is a friend when you know how to do it right. Not, okay, sidebar slightly. I'm not talking about masochism here. 
I'm talking about pain as a messenger so you learn from it and deal with it, not pain, you have to enjoy it. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, that, that was my little disclaimer in the closing credits. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. I will look forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully. Take care. Bye.